Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, New Generation HVAC. In this video, what I want to go ahead and go over with you all is troubleshooting pressures. Now, uh, when it comes to troubleshooting pressures, what we're going to go ahead and do is remember, we're going to work with our manifold gauges. We're going to go ahead and see the high side and the low side of my system. Now, the reason why we go ahead and connect my high side and my low side and I connect my manifold gauges on the system is to be able to see what's going on inside of my system without having to open it up. Now, uh, the pressures that we're going to be talking about today is the refrigerant that we're normally still working with out there in the field, and that's 410A. Now, 410A, if we go ahead and talk about perfect pressures, and remember, perfect pressures do not exist because uh, the ambient temperature outside, your indoor temperature outside, it, it's always changing, right? So, but let's say it never changed. Let's say we always have perfect pressures. We always have these perfect temperatures. So rule of thumb, when it comes to 410A refrigerant, we're always going to go ahead and try to see if my perfect pressures are on my low side is going to be, see where we have right here, 125 on the low side and 350 on the high side. Now let's go ahead and put a, you know, scenario where you all go ahead and connect those manifold gauges on the system and you go ahead and you turn on the system and it's reading something like this. So now once again, we're going to have to try to target my pressures of 125 on the low side and 350 on the high side for perfect pressures. So if I go ahead and connect, in this case, you all go ahead and connect your manifold gauges. Pay attention to the pressures that they're reading right here on these manifold gauges. So on your suction pressure, you have 160 PSI, and then on the high side, you have 550 PSI. So right there, it's indicating that I have a high head, normal suction pressure. Now you could say maybe my suction pressure is just a little bit too high. That could also indicate a high suction pressure. But remember, if your high head pressure goes up, then that means that your suction pressure will go ahead and go up as well. Well, um, what I'm trying to look for right here on my normal suction pressures and it is anywhere from, let's say, 125 or 120 to about 160, 165. So that's still indicating, at least from my experience, that the, you know, the, the normal, or in this case, the suction pressure is still really normal, but my head pressure is a little bit too high. I'm supposed to be hitting about 350 PSI, but something is actually going on. So what's actually going on with the system? Well, there's a possibility that there's air or non-condensables in the system. Now, if you guys use nitrogen, there's a possibility where nitrogen was mixed with the refrigerant. And if there's a mixture of those two inside of my refrigeration system, uh, then that's going to go ahead and pick up my head pressure. So what I have to go ahead and do is extract that uh, mixture and put in nothing but refrigerant inside of my system. Uh, if I go ahead and charge my system, if let's say you all didn't go ahead and use a scale or it was charged on, on a much cooler day, then what could possibly have happened is that too much refrigerant was added to the system. So that's what's called an overcharge system. So then you need to go ahead and remove some of that refrigerant that's in the system. Whenever you think, think about, you know, especially your condenser system, your condenser coil or your evaporator coil, you always have to go ahead and think of airflow. If you do not have adequate airflow going through your condenser coil, then you're not going to have adequate heat transfer. In your condenser coil, you're not going to have heat rejection. And then in your evaporator coil, you're not going to have heat absorption. So in this case, since we are dealing with high pressure and my head pressure, I have to now, you know, just go ahead and focus on what's actually going on in my condenser system. So if I go ahead and think of airflow in my condenser system, if I have a dirty coil and not enough airflow is going through my coil, then that means that that's going to go ahead and pick up my pressure and I don't have heat transfer happening as good as I want it to happen. Uh, also, if my fans on my uh, condenser system are, are, you know, folded or damaged, that's going to prevent adequate airflow going through that coil. So more than likely, if my condenser coil system is dirty, I'm going to have to wash it. Or if it's bad and damaged, you're going to have to either go ahead and replace the coil or the system itself, right? The whole entire system itself, which actually comes with a brand new condenser coil. Um, another thing that could be happening with the system is that, you know, it, electrically you're going to have to go ahead and look at your electrical components to see what's going on with those as well we haven't moved to that part yet but there's a possibility why because these uh, components could be affecting my refrigeration system in this case my pressures on my system if i have a bad capacitor and it doesn't allow my ofm to turn on in this case my outdoor fan motor or my condenser motor to turn on then that's going to go ahead and pick my pressure or 
Uh, it could be the OFM itself where it's not working and that needs to be replaced. So uh, we go ahead and we, we, we fix that and we bring the pressures back where they need to be. Now, another scenario that could be going on is we connect our gauges and we see something like this over here. We have low head, low suction pressure. Now go ahead and pay attention to the pressures right here. You have 75 on the suction side and 180 on the head side, right on the high side. So both of these are below my perfect pressures, right? Both of these are indicating that something is actually, you know, going on with my system. So what could be going on with my system if I ever connect my gauges and I see something like this? Well, there's a possibility where the system was being charged, but was not charged uh, 100%. What I mean by that is we could still have a little bit of refrigerant missing in my system. So I have a low refrigerant charge or there's a possibility where there's a leak in my system. So if there is a leak in the system, uh, the refrigerant needs to be extracted. In this case, it would need to be recovered. You would have to go ahead and look for the leak, repair it, and then reintroduce the refrigerant to bring it, bring it back to about 125 on the low side and 350 on the high side. Another possibility could be where you have a defective compressor valve or defective compressor valves. Uh, so now you would have to go ahead and run electrical tests, or in this case, several types of tests on the compressor to try to see if your compressor is actually the one that's failing or something else is going on with your system. There's a very, uh, you know, high chance in this case, depending on the temperature, right? Uh, some individuals like their uh, air conditioning system to be working while it's a little bit chilly outside. Uh, that doesn't mean that your system is not working, or in this case, that doesn't mean that my uh, system is low in refrigerant or there's a leak. It's just a possibility where it's just, you know, your ambient temperature is just a little bit too low for the light, you know, the pressures to bring it up, you know, to bring it up to where it's supposed to be. In this case, we'll go ahead and indicate if that's the, the, the reasoning, then you're going to have to come back probably in a, in a hotter time of the day. We move on to this scenario over here. So this right here says normal head, low suction. So on my high side, I'm reading almost, you know, normal pressures anywhere once again from 325 to 375. But right here, 330, I'm about hitting 350 PSI. It is going to drop. Reason being is because my suction pressure, if you go ahead and pay attention to the suction pressure, the suction pressure dropped to 50 PSI. So that means now instead of looking at my high side, like I looked at it over here, now I'm going to go ahead and look at my, at my low side, right? So my low side of my system is where my air handler is at, or my air handler is my low side of my system. So What's in my air handler? Well, I got two of my major components there. I have my evaporator, and then I have my meter and device, and then the electrical component that I have to look at would be my IFM or my indoor fan motor. So if you ever go ahead and connect your gauges and you see something like this, right, one of the things to go ahead and look for, once again, airflow. So you're going to go ahead and look to see how dirty your evaporator coil is. Make sure you get a good look at it. Make sure to see if, if it's dirty. If it, you know, you do have to go ahead and pull out that evaporator, wash it out here and then go ahead and put it back into the system, and that will go ahead and fix your pressures. Uh, not only that, uh, how is your blower motor? Is your blower wheel dirty? Because it could not be the blower motor itself, because the blower motor could be good, but your blower wheel that pushes the air through your duct system could be dirty, and that would have to go ahead and be pulled out, washed, set back, or put back together, and then placed back into the system. One thing that gets overlooked a lot in this case, before I go ahead and hand to that, uh, make sure you also go ahead and check your blower motor, right? Your IFM, your indoor fan motor. Why I didn't put capacitor here with my indoor fan motor is because some of these indoor fan motors are ECM motors, so they don't carry capacitors like your PSC motors. So that means that, it, you know, uh, you would not have to deal with a capacitor when it comes to your IFM motor. Actually, one thing that actually does not get looked at a lot is your air filter. So a lot of us go ahead and overlook our air filter. And remember, your air filter is very, very important. A lot of people think, no, this is just your air filter because it's not that expensive. They don't look at it the way they should really look at it. Well, your air filter is very important because if your air filter ever gets clogged up, look at what it's doing to my pressures. Now, what is it doing to my refrigeration system while the system is running? So something like this could indicate, you know, that I'm bringing back possibly liquid refrigerant into my compressor where I don't I don't give it a chance to turn into a state of vapor because there's no adequate airflow going through my through my coil right through my evaporator coil why because my air filter is is dirty so in this case what I recommend that you all go ahead and do is replace that 
air filter once a month, right? Go ahead and replace it once a month. Uh, I know some air filters say replace it every three months. I recommend that you replace it every month. Right now, if you go ahead and use the fiberglass filters, the ones that are a little bit more see-through, like every two weeks, you would have to go ahead and replace that. Now it brings us back to our last uh, scenario here. Here we have high head, low suction pressure, possibly known as a, as a restriction. So pay attention to these pressures right here. I have 80 on my suction and I have 400 on my high head or my head pressure. So I'm a little bit too high for my liking here of 350 and a little bit too low for the liking of my, of my low or my suction pressure. So what's possibly going on here is that you may have a kink in your line set. So your copper lines may have been damaged maybe during installation, during a change out or something accidentally happened where those line sets were kinked and bent. And maybe there's a restriction actually going on because of that. Uh, there's a, an accessory that actually goes on on your liquid line. So that liquid line, remember, is the one that's after your condenser coil going into your metering device. That line right there holds a lot of accessories, especially during your refrigeration or actually on your refrigeration system. So uh, pay attention to your filter dryer. The filter dryer is there and is added as an accessory to go ahead and remove moisture from the system. So after an evacuation is done, moisture is removed and sometimes a little bit of moisture is left. Well, the filter dryer is there to go ahead and collect as much moisture, or in this case, all that moisture from the system, just so we can go ahead and keep it as clean as possible. Um, you would have to go ahead and maybe get some temperature readings to see how your, how your filter dryer is performing. If there's a temperature change from one side to another, it's probably that, that your filter dryer is clogged up. Now, if it's not your filter dryer, then it could be your TXV or your meter device. Remember your meter device, it opens and closes based on the temperature of your suction line, if it needs more or less refrigerant, there's a possibility that your TXV just didn't want to open anymore or it stayed partially open or is just completely closed. Now, if that were ever the case, then yes, the, the TXV would need to be replaced. If the TXV ever needs to be replaced, remember also replace your filter dryer. Replace both of these so you don't have to go ahead and miss where, let's say it wasn't your... Uh, TXV that, that felt completely because that could indicate that maybe your filter dryer would probably be uh, clogged up later on or could be probably clogged up later on uh, because of what happened to, to your TXV. So go ahead and replace both of them, flush out the systems uh, using nitrogen, run an evacuation, and then recharge the system accordingly so you could go ahead and bring back the temperatures and the pressures to where you need them to be. And so that's the video right here of troubleshooting pressures. Our job as a technician is to go out there and make these systems work as efficiently as possible. So what I go ahead and, and you know, what I recommend you all continue doing is uh, studying these videos, studying this part of the video, uh, write down your notes as well. Uh, I recommend if you have not seen my previous videos, especially when, you know, uh, starting off on the basic cycle of refrigeration, go back seeing those videos. So where I break it down on my high side, the low side, the state of the refrigerant, and then the video that I just made last, I put all the pieces together. Like that, you could kind of understand a little bit of what we're talking about here right now on this video. So um, if you like this video, I encourage you all to go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe, so like that you won't go ahead and miss the next videos that are coming up as we continue to learn more about the air conditioning system. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section like that i could go ahead and get back to you all as soon as i can uh that being said i'll go ahead and i'll see you all on the next one